Well, the story of these barley loaves and fishes, what seems like such a little and becomes such a lot, is a story that we hear around this cycle of time every year. And it is the first among many readings that we will have over the next five Sundays that are signs through bread of God's abundance. And all the ways that this image or symbol of bread arises, this one has a story underneath its symbolism that is worthwhile to lift up for a little bit. First, we know that it is foreshadowed or mirrors, it's been written to mirror, the Old Testament reading we heard about how there's a little bit of bread that's passed around by the prophet, but all are satisfied. Because the first century Christian community understood that what Jesus was doing was in many ways mirroring what prophets or had foretold or taught. And that he was among that kind of lineage of saying something new and important to the people on behalf of God. Which is why it was a bit confusing for people. Is he a prophet? He's kind of acting like one. But is he the son of God? Is he the Messiah? He might even be kind of acting like one, but not quite. And whatever mold they tried to put him in, it's not quite the right one. Even their expectations of what a Messiah should do and become the next king, he is eschewing. <laughs> He's not meeting their expectations. And in fact, all the ways that he is representing what he's calling his people to do, specifically the apostles and those who will follow him, to do is in shadow of this Passover that is coming. Because the Passover being referred to in the Gospel is not too long ahead of him. And it is the Passover where he goes into Jerusalem and ultimately dies. In that shadowing in this, there's a very important message to the community of people being left behind. It's no accident that when fragments are gathered, they fill 12 baskets. The 12 apostles were understood in the early church as carrying the remainder of the teachings of Christ and the memory of that first community. And it is through taking that narrative and story forward, recognizing that the apostles are to do what Christ was doing, that brings us the ability to be Christians today. That those 12 folks, and yet we also know that there were men and women that were part of that apostleship, that are part of our legacy and what we, in our times, are asked to carry and be and do for the community. It is about far more than bread. In that image of the body of Christ, we, are a piece of that body, a piece of that unified bread that is far more than bread. When we come forward to receive communion every Sunday, and we get just a little bit of bread and a bit of a sip of wine or grape juice, when we're doing that, there is a symbol powerfully drawn forth in our communion with Christ that reminds us that our food for the journey, what we are taking, this ongoing pilgrimage through time and generations, is not only are we to be fed by this, but to go forth and by this symbol, by our relationship with God, feed others. Now, the sabbatical period, as I mentioned in the announcements, the sabbatical for our parish includes all of us. We're all going to be engaged in some study, reading, reflection, and invited again and again and again into special events and discussions and activities that a very special group of people have been preparing to do with you. And even though you might wonder what we started this sabbatical a few months back, well, what's been happening since then? And what's been happening is that quiet preparation that takes when the bread is rising. <laughs> And that rising bread is a group of people, the Stewardship and Sustainability and Leadership Team. Because the theme of this sabbatical that we are on together is Stewardship and Sustainability, Year-Round Investment 
in our holy currencies. Just like the apostles and Philip and others used to say, hmm, how are we going to feed all these people? Because all they were thinking about all the time was just the money aspect of that. How are we going to feed it? It takes six months' wages. And Jesus it has the last thing on his mind is money. It is only one currency. We have a song. We are a doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And that blessing from God is far larger than money, just like the symbol of bread is far larger than bread. But this stewardship and sustainability will walk us through these reflections, considering not just one currency, but six. If we look at the term, what does the word currency come from? Its Latin word, or base, is currentia. It means flow. To flow through, like a river, to bring life and greening to places in the desert, or to keep life teeming and replenished and renewed. To flow. Our currencies are meant to flow through the community and out into the community. Just like when we did our vision and mission process over the past couple of years, and we created these banners that are hanging in the narthex welcome area, our artist heard that from us and drew the Puget Sound waters and the waters of our baptismal covenant flowing out into our community. Take a look at that image, because our currencies are also being asked to flow into our community and among us. So our Stewardship and Sustainability Leadership Team will be working with you. And among those people include Katie Preeman, Alan Hicks, who is in Formation for Ordination, John Heberlin, who serves with our music ministries, Andrea Lofredo, who serves on our vestry, Evie Beard, who is the chair of our endowments and coordinator for our business group. And Gonzalo Canseco, who is our senior warden. All of these people, then, are here with me today to share with you a bit of a taste, a communion, if you will, on these six holy currencies. The first currency that flows throughout the community that we will reflect upon is the currency of leadership. Currency of leadership, will you come meet your people? <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Well, first off, do the Moses Sandals tip off <laughs> Gracious leadership. There's an understated implication there of gracious. It's grace. Grace is a gift from God. Leaders need to understand that they don't have all the answers. They don't know everything. But the people that they're with, they do have all the answers. Gracious leadership means taking advantage of everyone's knowledge, everyone's wisdom, everyone's experience, so we can all work together for a common goal. Thank you. Gracious leadership, would you go out and meet your people and flow among the community? Thank you. <laughs> Indeed, gracious leadership as a currency is something all of us are to be a part of. Not just the people in rows, but the people in the pews, the people who we know. We, through gracious leadership, each of us create time and space for us to reflect on our values and beliefs by exercising our love and our compassion for one another empowering one another to share their gifts, their experiences, and how they might benefit their community. Gracious leadership interacts and connects different people and groups together through a synergy of creative thought. Gracious leadership uses mutual invitation, recognizing the power and authenticity of every voice. And that mutual invitation is one model that we will all learn together. We will create through gracious leadership a grace margin that takes us away from living in the fear zone of change or the fear that says, but we've always done it some other way. By creating a liminal space, gracious leadership 
will allow us to make new discoveries, invite new people into leadership with clear expectations of what will happen and what will not happen. Through spiritual leadership formation, we will together reflect in scripture and reason and tradition. The second currency we will reflect upon that already flows through us, but of which we will become more aware, is the currency of time and place. Currency of time and place, will you come and meet your people? Find space of their own 
and the ability and opportunity and invitation to use their gifts. The fourth currency that we will consider and reflect upon during this battle is the currency of truth. Currency of truth, would you introduce yourself? <laughs> Thanks for having my testimony. It will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. As you flow through the people and among our community, the currency of truth helps us explore our differences. It is vitally important as the way that we hear different perspectives and create opportunities to share our own unique stories and encourage the stories of others to listen and hear with passion, a passion that then may move us to social action. We must actively seek stories of truth, explore our neighborhood, identify its needs and the needs of all our communities, engaging both our hearts and our minds in reflective listening and action. The ability to speak the truth addresses social justice issues in our time, our nation, and our world, to which we are called to respond. Issues of racial tensions, joblessness, homelessness, political division, economic crisis, and the difficulty of our environmental realities and changes. Our sixth currency, doing double duty, <laughs> is the currency of wellness. Evie Beard, who serves on this committee now, uh, is not able to be with us because she's doing exactly that. Wellness with her family time. But the currency of wellness, our Evie, who wearing her name badge, is dressed as a nurse. The most important thing about this, as the currency of wellness flows throughout our community and says hello, the currency of wellness is lifted up, especially within this Sabbath time. The very notion of Sabbath from our Old and New Testament is intended to be holy time. A time that is set aside and made intentionally different from any other time. It is a time that is supposed to take us out of our usual patterns, our usual way of doing things. All the way that we do things over the next several months will be different. If you're disturbed, you probably should be. Because Sabbath invites us to the engagement of the whole community. It's not just me that's going away to study. It's you that will be invited again and again by the leadership team to do this reflection and work. Through Sabbath time, you'll be asked to engage in dialogue, asked to take on responsibility for your community's wellness, your through your volunteerism. You'll be invited to think about balance and the cycle of grace that flows throughout our community that includes physical, social, economic, ecological, and spiritual wellness. Through the currency of wellness, the human community itself seeks Sabbath, and our question becomes, as a faith congregation, how do we provide Sabbath for others? By learning respectful communication guidelines, which our leadership group will teach, you will be invited to write and join into a community covenant for wellness. And finally, our sixth currency that we will be asked to consider throughout our sabbatical time is the currency of money. Currency of money, would you come and introduce yourself? <laughs> I just want to share with you all that I love money. And the really great thing about it is that there's always enough if we share it with one another. Thank you. Thank you. And as the of money flows to the congregation, that flowing also gives life to all these other currencies, making our vision and mission possible, that creates the idea that we are empowered so that we can empower others. We don't make money, God made us. We are the currency, we are the bread, we are the wine, we are the body of Christ. Through us, we are to be part of the flow, through the living water of the Holy Spirit that brings life. Because when released, 
Money mobilizes the entire cycle of blessing. If money is buried, it has no value. If it is not used, it cannot help others. Raising money in a capital campaign will fulfill our community vision and expand our hospitality towards those who need the Sabbath we can provide. When we create our annual budget next year and going forward, we will be reviewing that budget in the, in the way that we have considered all these currencies because together they reveal our purpose. We must move from the idea of scarcity, oh, we can't do that, to the idea of God's abundance. We can, and we are doing that. I ask your thanks for all God's currency. And as part of their first responsibilities, they will be handing you out a pamphlet that describes the stewardship of the 365 process and the currencies of exchange and flow. As Christ asked his disciples to gather up all that the people have, through Eucharist and communion, we're reminded that after we do that gathering, there are men then to share will be a gathering. In the Stewardship 365 program, we are one of the first parishes in our diocese to look at long term sustainability, to think beyond short or long term strategic planning, to think into a way of how do we contribute to a sustainable model of parish life. There is an abundance of these. <laughs> So please be sure to take a look at this. The other resource I would direct you to is this little pamphlet that is available on the welcome table out in the entry narthex area. This little one-page back-and-front pamphlet tells you about the parish sabbatical and the work that I'll be doing during that some of that time. And so take one of these with you too, or look at it if you'd like to, and we'll be happy to get you as many of these as you'd like to share. In the miracle of the loaves and fishes, the most important thing to know is that in every generation, we are gathered up. We are gathered up to bless those who are here and those to come. In Christ's name, amen. amen.